Welcome to my channel and another art journal tutorial. This one ha is called Home is Where the Heart Is. So I'm starting with my archival ink and this Studio Light mixed media foam stamp. It's called Multicolor and I'll put a link to it and any other specialized stencils or stamps that I use so that you can go and check it out if you are interested. So I love the pattern of this one and it is going to become well loved. I've used it to stamp in with acrylic paints and now with the archival ink and they work so, both so well. This is a stencil from the Crafters Workshop. It's entitled Ripples. It's one that I have in my stash and I don't often reach for it but when I do I love it. So again, I need to dust it off and use it more. So I'm coming in with some cobalt teal. This is from Deco Art Premium Paint. I bought a few of them. They went on sale at Walmart and I thought I'd give them a try. So I picked out a few colors that I knew that I would use and definitely the teals fit into that category. So I grabbed the teal. Now I'm grabbing some lime green, green yellow, and I believe that's Liquitex Basics. And then of course, you know, I've got to have the Prussian blue and it goes with both of them. And I'm not really being too careful and getting a brand new makeup sponge. Often I use just a different part and sometimes it blends. Now I'm absolutely loving the look of what I have here. Got that white space in there and you know I'm edging it and I'm thinking you know okay what am I going to do now? People ask you know do you have a plan? Do you know where you're going with this? And you know sometimes I don't and that was definitely the case here. I was just going to create a colorful background. So I have this swirl stamp which I love and just adding a little bit more pattern to this space. I, at this point I'm thinking I want to keep some of that white space that the stenciling allowed for. Now I'm using a, I believe this was a Stampenda stamp, but there's a link to, I think it's an Inka Dinka Do stamp, this dot stamp. I've cut this in half and I love the effect it does. Now here I decide to mix. I've been doing a lot of vintage stuff and following the videos of Sean Petit and one thing that she does is she drags gesso over top of a background and this pushes back the background. Now I've only done this when I've been going vintage colors which I do not plan on doing on this one. So I'm putting that on and it really does push that background back. You've, I'm kind of mourning the loss a little bit of the background that was there but I did take a picture of it and so I will have it. Now I'm trying to do a wash and I've got the glazing mixture and this light blue permanent and I'm removing some of it, adding some Prussian blue and again removing. I just want a light wash of it. Now that's catching in the gesso, that the gesso is adding texture in unexpected and yet wonderful, wonderful ways. Just adding some of the colors back in and basically rebuilding the background because it dramatically changed when I did, chose to use that gesso technique. but the feel and you're going to have so many layers. As you keep going, it just adds that layered approach that making it look so much more complex. So I'm missing some of this ripple stencil. So I bring the stencil back in and I'm bringing this more to the foreground and I'm using the dark Prussian blue. Now my goal here when I'm stenciling isn't necessarily to get this all perfect. Some of it is more, is darker than in other places. And I love building in that same but different. Now 
I decided at this point that I want to make this like a sky. The sky, the earth. I'm coming in with the dotted rings stencil, one of my favorite stencils for adding this little bit of a detail. It's just, it's a little something. It's not so much in your face, but it does make a big impact. There are some stencils in my stash that inevitably always have paint on them, even, you know, because I tend to grab them because they just are just that perfect addition to so many backgrounds. And I like the curves of this one going with the curves of the ripple stencil. They have the same element. So I'm grabbing the Stampenda stamp. So you can see that I'm repeating a lot of what I've already used in previous layers. Now you can't necessarily see the, all the layers in this view, but in real life you do see that. So here's that original and I'm glad I took a picture because now I can recreate it. There I've pushed it back with the gesso and dramatically changed it. And then we have what I ended up with, this background. So the process guided me towards the elements that I used. So I decided that now's the time to do my birdhouse. So I cut a rectangle out of some gel, gel prints that I've had and I cut a roof line and a perch for the for the birdhouse and I'm painting the the roof line and the perch a the Prussian blue that goes with the background that goes with a color that's in the main part of the birdhouse and I just couldn't find a gel print that looked that was perfect now I'm just taking some stamps. This one's just a wavy stamp and just adding some texture, some interest, some pattern to, to this. I just don't want it to be just one flat color and tone. And then this is going to be on a post or a wooden stake. So I'm just painting that brown. And I'm just using a makeup sponge. I add a little black in there. I've got the black and the brown. Again, mixing colors just bumps it up from one flat tone to, you know, you have some variety. Now, I apologize for the lighting. The This is getting later in the afternoon, and it is November on Vancouver Island, which means it's, in all likelihood, cloudy, dismal day. So now I'm just collaging these birdhouse pieces together. And I've played a little bit with this gel print, getting the right size for the page. Now you can go online and get a template for a birdhouse if you want, and then use that. But I've just kind of eyeballed it because basically this is a rectangle and then the roof line. And I'm using gel medium to glue this all down. Now I have a, a hole punch. I just recently bought a one inch hole, uh, circle punch and I had a bunch of these. So I painted it black. I think I'm just going to use that. I could have painted the circle on. Another way to go. But I wanted a little bit more texture and interest. Now I have this always in my heart stencil and I love that motif that's in the bottom. And I thought, oh, that'd be kind of cute to put stencil on to the birdhouse. You do a search on Pinterest, you'll see sometimes they have hearts and other painting elements on it. So here I'm just masking off parts of the stencil that I do not want. And that's just to make it easier. Then I'm deciding what color do I want to do. And I have a lot of that teal aqua in the background. So I decide that I'm going to try to use it. I'm not sure if it's going to show up enough, 
But I thought, you know what, worst case scenario, I can wipe it off or just re-stencil on top of it with a white, which was my second try. But I absolutely loved it. It's not as stark as the white, but it kind of corresponds with that color that's in the background. And it just all worked together. So I'm glad I trusted my instincts on that. So then I decide I'm going to move the door, the hole of the birdhouse to the top. And I'm giving this a dry. And as you can see, I glued this birdhouse down. I didn't even attempt to make it straight. I wanted it to be kind of wonky. And my thought process at this time was to put the sentiment along that right-handed side. So here I am using an angle brush and I'm using the floating acrylic technique of shading. And I'm using black. Now what the black, the shading is going to do, it's going to make this birdhouse stand out from the background. I will put a link to the video that I did teaching this technique and giving you some exercises that you can do to learn how to use, the, use this technique in your canvases or your art journals. The advantage of using the floating acrylic technique as opposed to the Stabilo L pencil or a woodless charcoal pencil is when it's dry, it is permanent. You can also shade with any color that you have acrylic paint. So you can use a dark blue without buying an additional product. And as you can see, I'm turning the book to make it easy for me to get to wherever I want with the shading. And I shaded around this heart stencil as well, just to add a little bit more depth and interest. When you're shading, you get to choose how much you're going to do or how little. Now I'm just using the same technique and I'm shading around the outside of the page to just edge it. And I would say 99.9% .9 of the time I do edge my pages or canvases. It's just a look that I like. So the next day comes and I printed out a whole bunch of different sayings, home is where the heart is, which is what I used here, um, and different ones that related to my focal image. And I played around with the, the flow. It needed to be big enough that it's kind of went down that side to balance the focal image. And I'm gluing this down with the gel medium as well. I grab my Secura white. This is a 10. It's very bold and it advertised as being permanent. And I'm using a line and two little hashtag hash marks just as a different effect. So when you're going around, you don't need, necessarily need a solid line or often you see me doing dashes or stitch, faux stitching. This is somewhere in between. So you have options that you can play with. Wanted to brighten this up a bit, so I'm adding the white in here. And just that little bit, it really brightens the image. In real life, this looks way brighter than in this artificial lit studio of mine. Now I want to shade around the words. And I'm using the float technique 
as well. Because I have white in the background, I just opted to leave the words on white. If white wasn't as predominant, I may have colorized the sentiment, given it a wash of blue or the pink. There are other options. I really am liking how this page turned out. I've been wanting to do these bird houses. It's been sitting in my studio for, as an idea for, for a couple months now while I've been doing craft fair stuff. And you're definitely going to see more with bird houses. I have an idea for a canvas. Then I decide to add a little dragonfly at the top for just a little bit of a whimsy. This is a stencil that I cut out with my Silhouette Cameo. And I just want one little dragonfly there. I love dragonflies. And I just liked adding that here. It doesn't really distract from the focal point. Here's some close-ups of the picture. Check the links if you're looking for any of the products that I use. Thank you so much for shopping in my Amazon store. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. If you try and follow this tutorial, please come and post what you create in my Facebook group, Mixed Media Creations. Bye for now.